Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Good morning, welcome to theCUBE's coverage day three of Dell Technologies World from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman and we're pleased to welcome one of our alumni back to theCUBE. We've got Jay Snyder with us, SVP of Global Alliances, Service Providers and Industries. Jay, Great welcome back. Yeah, thank you for, so much for having me again. Oh, our pleasure. So, we have been talking for, this is our third day of covering the event. Oh, wow. Lots of news, lots of technology conversations. We know there's a big Global Partner Summit it's been that fantastic, is a big actually. Part of Dell Technologies' yeah. world, thriving partner ecosystem. Give us an overview of Global Alliances and some of the feedback from the last few days of the Partner Summit. So, fantastic. Thank you again for having me. I'll tell you this: the feedback is off the chart. I don't even. I'm, I've lost the ability to find new words to describe how excited our partners seem to be with the messaging that we've had here. But what's been consistent is best Dell Technologies' world ever and best global partner summer that we've ever had. And I think the reason behind that is not just because we've done a great job um, presenting the content, it's because of the content, right? If you think about the partner ecosystem, it's interesting, we've always worked incredibly well with them and our partners love what we do and the products we make, but our messages have never been perfectly aligned. Think about the messages we have now on the main stage. We have four transformations in delivering outcomes and then we have multi-cloud and the multi-cloud strategy. And then think about what the partners do. They deliver the strategy around designing and defining what a multi-cloud architecture is going to look like and or being the providers that actually deliver it. Our messages are perfectly aligned. So they're so excited to see that they are now at the epicenter of everything that we go and do. And the fact that I would say probably more exciting is our entire sales force is trained on those messages, understanding those messages and embracing those messages. So they're getting huge lift now from our sellers as opposed to kind of, I wouldn't say we were never, at conflict, but we're more in parallel, and now we're really lockstep. Well, does that make sense? It, it does, Jay, and, and, and you brought up a really good point. I, you know, congratulations, glad to hear everybody's in lockstep, because I remember, you know, talk about the transformation of the channel. Yeah. And I go back when converged infrastructure first rolled out, there were people, oh my gosh, I make millions of dollars racking and stacking and sure. cabling stuff, I need to shift. Cloud. There was, you know, at VMware's Partner Summit, you know, one of the executives of VMware, you know, every time Amazon wins, you know, we all lose. Sure. So help fast forward today, you know, cloud, a big theme of the message, how do how all do of win? those partners fit into those environments, yeah. and how have they gotten to over the fear of cloud and to be fully embracing and executing on multi-cloud? Maybe I should just set context too about who my partners are, yeah. so that would be helpful. So we represent an alliances, the largest global systems integrators. Right. So think about firms like an H HCL, a Deloitte, and Accenture, and I hate to leave anybody out, but there's 18 of them. And then we represent the cloud, <coughs> the cloud service provider ecosystem. So a couple hundred cloud providers that actually do provide managed private clouds off-prem or public clouds. So they're super excited about the message because they fit in on both ends, right, as I was just describing. Right, they're the ones that are really going to have to deliver the strategy around what it's going to look like and how they're going to get there. You know, customers ask us all the time, hey, I want to get to the cloud. But they don't really know what it means. So we have to ask them, what are you really trying to accomplish and why? Right, and once we understand that, we can engage with these partners and it's a perfect entree for them to go figure out, articulate, and design that architecture. And then, last time I checked, we're actually not a cloud company. Right, we have great products, we have great services, we have great platforms, but we're not a cloud company. Right? We don't provide those types of capabilities. So when you think about being able to leverage multi-cloud. And, and, and I'm sorry, just to clarify, you're saying you're not a public cloud company. Not because a public cloud company. The, you know, the private cloud absolutely is a, you know, part of the On-prem private cloud, yes. right? But when we want to go off-prem and create that multi-cloud environment based on use case, now all those partners fit into that play. And they have the ability, through the capabilities we just announced with Dell Technologies Cloud, to leverage those hyperscalers. So where they used to see them as foe, they're now part of the solution and they can deliver that solution through our new platform that we just brought to market. So again, it gets back to, we used to fight it, now we're embracing it and leveraging it and delivered a comprehensive solution. So starting Monday, when Michael walked out on stage with sure. Pat, with Jeff, the message over lying, uh, and of course with Satya from Microsoft, was collaboration integration. 
So really starting to see all the layers of Dell Technologies and its brands come together in a much more cohesive way than we've seen so far. In terms of what the partners are now enabled to deliver, what was some of the feedback on that? Is it, do they feel that it's been made more simplified, that it's been made more streamlined, that it's opening up new market opportunities with you know, the Dell Technologies Cloud and some of the related announcements? So, so it's a complicated question you're actually asking, because for years the partners have been saying, we'd love to view you as a single company, right? That's kind of the missing ingredient to really unlock the full potential. I think the first big piece, the big mover in this, is the Dell Technology Cloud Platform. It's really the instantiation of what Michael's been talking about for the last three years, which is I'm going to bring all this stuff together and create a force in the industry where we compete in the market together, not against one another. So we're seeing that, so the partners are ecstatic. Right, they're seeing the best of all the piece parts come together in that platform. And we've told them that's the first step. But we have been working with them for years to provide what I'll call an umbrella effect across all the different companies to allow them to tap into all those resources. So in some degree, we've been doing it already. We've been playing that multi-cloud game and working cross strategically aligned business to bring those values to life. But now, we put our money where our mouth is and we have simplified the approach with the product and the platform to make it easier for them to go to market. Yeah, we, we, do have a little bit, we do have a little bit of ways to go though, I want to be clear. So yeah, and Jay, really good points there because uh, I wrote an article recently about hybrid cloud, got a lot of history with it and simplifying a piece of the overall puzzle, but as you said, those hyperscales fit into it. Satya Nadella up on stage, AWS, a strong partner on VMware, sure. you know, Google announcement uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. Those SIs that are your partners there are some of the critical pieces, because there's a lot of complexity out there and we need key partners to be a help us to do there. You know, the, the Dell Technologies family is a piece of it, but those SIs are really the, the arms and legs that are going to go help all of the customers understand, try to get their arms around and you know, hopefully simplify and what, what I said is they need to turn from a bunch of point pieces into they do. an overall solution they do. that help me drive innovation and drive my business forward, not trying to manage all of the pieces. We, I talked about it yesterday. I mean, IDC says that 62% of customers will have a multi-cloud architecture, but for my partner ecosystem, it's more interesting to know that 70% of the customers are going to choose a provider to design, architect, and manage that infrastructure. So if you think about that, seven in 10 customers will use one of those global systems integrators and or cloud service providers, or more likely both, to deliver on their vision and their outcomes that they need to achieve to change their business models, which is, again, great for our business. How influential are your, is your partner ecosystem in terms of some of the announcements that we've heard this week? They're out, feet on the street, they're talking with customers about the challenges that they're having, emerging trends, AI, ML. What's that sort of synergistic partner feedback loop like that helps Dell Technologies yeah, drive great forward? great question. We run uh, partner advisory boards uh, in each major theater multiple times a year, and these are the exact things we ask them. What type of trends are you seeing? We map it against our product portfolio and our solutions to identify where there's gaps. 5G is a great example, right? We're looking at where the market's going. I happen to have responsibility for a big chunk of our telco vertical as well within the company, so it's a hot topic. And you know, for a while, we were, we were honestly lagging in this particular space. If I think back two years ago, we talked telco, but we didn't walk telco. Uh, we've made a lot of investments over the last two years to build a product business unit, specifically around telco solutions. And I'm proud to say, especially coming out of Mobile World Congress this year, that we have arrived. We have incredible products, solutions that really are exactly what our partners are looking for and our end user customers are looking for. And it's an interesting dynamic because a lot of our partners are our customers. If you think about the telco community that's really going to embrace and drive 5G, we both sell to them and we sell through them. So we love the fact they'll consume our underlying technology, but more importantly, love the fact that we can then use them as a route to market to expose hundreds, thousands of customers to those capabilities in the broader scale. Yeah, Jay, the, the networking is such a critical component of that service provider piece. So how much of the, that, that solution that you're talking about pulls in some of the aspects from VMware, uh, you know, NSX, the SD-WAN, uh, th those pieces seem natural fit uh, to help drive that overall solution. Yeah, I, I would actually tell you that um, my opinion is probably the first products that we brought to market that were really cross-company, cr cross-collaboration, you know, even before we got to the Dell Technologies Cloud, were exactly what you're talking about. Some of those networking assets, some of the security assets that VMware has integrated with some of our products, server technology, to build some integrated telco specific things for the core and the edge, which is really where they're operating, specifically around the edge. Velo Cloud is going to be a huge piece of that. SD-WAN, we see the telcos as a huge route to market, again, for that particular product, and as a massive consumer 
of that particular product. Uh, we understand they'll have to cannibalize some of their own business, but it's the way the market's going. So the answer is yes. We're seeing great integration, great collaboration between our product business unit under Kevin, Kevin Schatzkammer in Telco and his VMware counterparts. And I think I said his name right there too. Yeah, I, I had to interview him once and absolutely getting, 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 getting that right was tough. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things always at the show is just the, the, the feedback that you get from, from, uh, from customers and sure. from, from your partners. So yeah. give us the mood, you know, where are they? What are some of the you know, key opportunities, challenges? Uh, what, what's top of mind issues for, for, I'm for your I'm partners? I'm telling you, like if I, I, I can't make this up, the mood is off the chart, right? They've said consistently, best sessions ever. I, I was talking to one particular partner last night, um, I won't say his name, but he's worked in this industry for 30 years. He's worked for major companies, SAP, Adobe, Microsoft, Microsoft. This is his first time at Dell Technologies World working as a partner of ours. Um, he said, hands down, this is the best partner-driven, partner content, partner event I've ever seen in the industry. I'm so excited about the focus Dell Technologies has as a company on our ecosystem and the types of conversations we're having to actually not just sell to us, but sell through us. Right? We're really, I think we've really worked hard to view our partners not as customers, but truly as partners. And it's all about the business we build together, not about the business we do together, if that makes sense, right? Well that trust, trust and relationship is absolutely table stakes. It is. For it's any paramount. organization, and it sounds like you guys have really done a tremendous amount of work in the last few years to get that to the highest level that it's ever been at. I would agree. I think we've come a long way from where we were. We have a lot more work to do, it'll never end but I'm super excited with what we've achieved. I think our partners are too, because the results they're getting are fantastic. Uh, I talked about the profitability of our business and their business together, which means what we're selling has value, which is fantastic as well. So it's good to know that we're not just winning in the market, but we're winning with high value. Which, and again, it gets back to where this conversation started, which is everyone's talking about transformation and outcomes. It's hard to deliver value if you're not delivering an outcome or vice versa, right? Yeah, uh, Jay, uh, w one of the areas that I, I think you, your partners and, and the solutions that, that you're help bringing to market uh, would, would have some good opinion on is this move from kind of the CapEx to the OpEx model. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things we look at, the cloud announcements, and it's like, okay, wait, which of these are as a service? Which one of these you know, can I do financing on? And which one of these you know, are mostly built on the uh, you know, hardware? Wait, wh where does that fit into the overall discussion? And it's, you know, uh, wh where do you get feedback from your partners and the ultimate it's, end users? It's literally in every single conversation we have, so I can't think of a particular partner conversation that doesn't center around a variety of things. One is always our technology, one is our go-to-market engine and how we can leverage that, and the other is commercials. And it's not the price, it's the consumption. Right, how are we going to consume your technology? CapEx, OpEx, and everything in between, and that everything in between used to be one or two things, now it's 10 or 15 things. Right, the models have gotten very complex and very dynamic, um, so it's top of mind. And the beautiful thing is, you know, a few years ago, the only way to get a consumption model or an as-a-service model was through my partner ecosystem. Now, Dell's done a good job to catch up to some degree, but to truly deliver what a lot of the customers are asking for, which is pure OpEx, no CapEx, pay-as-you-grow models, we're still leveraging heavily our partner ecosystem to be able to deliver that, and the challenge for us is to be able to keep up with them. Right, they're moving at such a rapid pace, and the dynamics of those models are changing. We have to evolve as quickly to be able to offer what our competitors are doing. I'm excited to say, so far, so good. Right, we're doing a great job of that, but I would, I would agree with you, right? The, the commercial model, the consumption models, are top of mind in every conversation, had two today, right, on how we're going to structure these things, and it's really exciting, right, because when we do it right, it tends to be not only great for Dell and great for the partner, but great for the customer. So it, it really is, it's the classic win, win, win. Are you, you know, one of the things that it seems that Dell has been, te technologies has been working to do for a while now is become this sort of one-stop shop for all things IT. Partners, are they looking to have that single trusted source? Do they appreciate now that they've got that, that they can really go to Dell Technologies and enable their customers and your customers to transform IT, security, workforce. We heard a lot about workforce transformation. Sure, very common. Are they now seeing Dell as this, hey, this is this really one-stop shop. We can actually deliver everything that our customers are looking for? Uh, they're definitely seeing it because we're telling it to them all the time, <laughs> right? Um, but yes, the answer is, Without question, I think one of the big drivers for our business has been the ability to aggregate the breadth of Dell Technologies and bring the full portfolio to bear to them. 
I'd love to see them all standardize on us exclusively. That's my job, right? That's what we do. We try to eliminate white space and own all market share. We'll never get there 100%, but we've seen, you know, we look at a variety of metrics in our business. We look at revenue growth, profitability growth. We also look at white space which is what you're talking about. Have we consumed the white space where our competitors used to be with inside our partners? And we've seen massive growth there in the last two years. Significant growth across the board. And the reason is because of what you just described. We now have an economies of scale advantage and a breadth of portfolio advantage where it just makes sense for them to bet on us to get what they need, right? Whether it's a pivotal capability or a VMware capability or a Boomi capability, when we have that everybody pointed in the same direction, the story is just so much more powerful, and, they're, and I'm not going to say they're buying it, they're believing it, and they're seeing it in the field. So again, I talked about it earlier, if we can transact at that level, at a Dell Technologies level, it means more value to our partners, but ultimately they can provide more value to their customers. So they're more profitable, our customers get better solutions. So yes, yes, and yes. Everybody wins. Well Jay, Everybody's thank you so much you for joining Stu and me, sharing the tremendous momentum that you guys have achieved. We look forward to hearing next year. I do too. Even better news. It will be. Well, thanks. Thank you again for joining hey, us. Thanks for having me. Great to meet you. Thanks, thanks Stu. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching us on theCUBE live from Dell Technology World 2019. Day three of theCUBE's two set coverage continues after this.